Hallelujah. It was God's grace. Amen. Where's the evidence of God's grace? Who is the evidence? Where's the evidence of God's grace? Come on. We are the evidence of God's grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The evidence of God's grace. Why? Because it was God's grace. Amen. Hallelujah. It sounds like we ready to have church. We ready to have church. We ready to have church. Who ready to have church? The songwriter said, if you want to know what heaven sounds like, just let it fill the room. Ah, come on here. If you want to know what heaven sounds like, just let it fill the room. Open up your mouth. The glory don't stop because the song stop. The praises don't stop because the song stop. The praises don't stop because the music stop. If it's in your heart, give God some praise. Hallelujah. Because we're the evidence of God's grace. Amen. Hallelujah. We are now going to have announcements and offering prayer by Bishop Oliver. And following that, that um, we're going to have a solo by Deacon Fryer. And after that, it's, <laughs> it's the word time. Who ready for the word? Get yourself together. You have to go to the bathroom. Let's go. Hurry up and go. Just come on in because there's a word just for you. Tailor made just for you. Just for you. I'm, I'm serious. Like a cookie cutter. It's just for you. You know that's on um, commercial just for me. It's just for you. So I please, I'm praying that you open up your tent doors, open up your ears, and receive what thus saith the Lord through the bishop that has been placed, the set man of God here. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Let the people of God say amen. Who needs a blessing this morning? I have been assigned to uh, speak increase into your lives. So get your offerings ready. This is not just an offering appeal, but uh, this is this is me being obedient to the leading of the Spirit. You don't have an offering this morning. That this is not your Sunday to tithe. Think about your savings account. Think about your checking account. If you have a checkbook with you, put it in your hands. What little bit of money that you have in your purse or in your pocket, put it in your hands. This is this is a moment for increase. Father, in your holy and majestic name, we come obedient. We come with our gifts and our offerings. Uh, we've proven to be faithful in our tithing. It's not the amount, it's our consistency. So Lord, we come asking that you would take our gifts and use them for your glory. But Lord, the, the, the Spirit is leading me to make the appeal for these your people and their resources. So I come this morning speaking increase into the lives of these, your people. We cannot do all the things that you've called us to do without being a people of prosperity. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We need to take care of our home responsibilities. We need to take, take care of our financial obligations. Uh -huh. And we do that because of your goodness. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, the men have already stated it so uh, clearly. Yes. It was by God's grace yes. that we are who we are. We have what we have. But Lord, today I speak increase on behalf of every family represented here today, every savings account, every checking account, every resource of income, I speak increase. I know that some people would, would try to uh, profess that they are on a fixed income, but Lord, today we're going to unfix that which has kept us from being where we need to be, and we're going to move above what has been fixed. The enemy fixed it. You've given us overabundance. Yes, You've given us the overflow. You, and today, Lord, we speak it into our lives. We speak it into the bills that we have yet to pay. We speak it into our income taxes we have yet to receive. 
Lord, we thank you for all that you do. And we do it for your glory. See about your people. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. amen. Anybody who feels increased, put your hands together and give God praise. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 No! 
up for this moment. We bless the name of the Lord for this time of worship, honoring God in his holy presence. To all of the clergy who are assembled here and those seated before me, to our worship leader, Reverend Zena Pressey, then to our men who have sang, and then to our soloists. To all of the officers and members of this church, it's good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. I am convinced we did not just come here out of habit or tradition, but we came here with an agenda. And at the top of the agenda is praise. Oh, bless his name today. Uh, let me be brief in... Uh, Saying what I should have said earlier, uh, this is uh, the Sunday before our uh, national holiday honoring the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Amen. Jr. Uh, and I pray that all of you will do something uh, positive, something constructive and reflective on tomorrow uh, as we uh, enjoy that time off from work or whatever we normally do. Um, that later on this evening at 6 p.m., the uh, uh, Interdenominational Ministers Action Council will have their annual MLK, Martin Luther King, um, worship and celebration. That starts at 6 p.m. at the New Destiny Fellowship Church, 906 uh, East 16th Street. And um, I will be there, and I am looking forward to a great a time of worship and celebration. You are all invited to come and to be a part of that. Amen. On uh, next Saturday, uh, New Calvary will host the Interdenominational Ministers Action Council. They will be having their monthly meeting here at the New Calvary Church, and we will be, be providing them with a uh, wonderful breakfast as well as uh, space for them to meet and do what they do. So we are taking care of the meal being prepared. And would you please uh, consult with um, Deacon Dwight Fryer in terms of your availability to be a server and to help out in wh whatever way we can so that uh, our, our uh, uh, sanctuary and our space is in order, indoors and out, and uh, we can do our job as a, a responsible host. There are other things that are on our announcements that we can look at um, and at your leisure on our website or in some of the materials that may be uh, with you, uh, may have been handed out today. Good morning to all of our in-person worshipers. Uh, you, have, you have shown me in uh, a wonderful way that you are praisers this morning. And I thank God for you. Also, I want to greet and welcome all of our Facebook uh, congregation and worshipers uh, that are uh, with us this morning. Uh, sit back and relax in your pajamas. Uh, kick off your, your slippers uh, and have a good time of worship uh, in the, the presence of the Lord. Uh, I want to get right to uh, what God is leading me and, and giving me. Uh, I've struggled all week long without a word. I, I worried and I prayed about the fact that 
But Lord, you know, it's, 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 it's Thursday and I, I haven't heard from you. <laughs> it's Friday and I'm still looking. And he finally, he finally came through. I said, well, I'm just going to sit down and start writing. I'm just, I'm just going to see what, what, what comes out of me. And, and, and that was the invitation. I opened uh, my mouth and I began to use my fingers. And the Lord began to pour out this word uh, that is for us on today. Would you turn in your Bibles with me to the book of Psalms? Psalm 107. Amen. Amen. Just a few verses of scripture there. Psalm 107, verse 1 says, O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy and gathered out of the hand, out of the lands uh, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. That's enough of that. I, I want to pray God's blessings upon the reader, the hearer, and more importantly, the doer of his word. Thank Would you Lord. please uh, be seated? God, our Father, and our Creator, once again, we are reminded that your hand is upon our lives. Uh, this word is a reminder of your goodness to your people. So, Lord, we pray that a clarion uh, message would uh, resonate in this place and in the lives of these, your people, that we would walk away from here uh, doubling our commitment to be praisers, to be worshipers, to be the people who will call upon uh, the world to hear of the goodness of your hand. So bless now, Lord, this your preacher. With all of my uh, inabilities, with all of my frailties and uh, weaknesses, take all of that and hide it behind your cross that I may preach Christ and him crucified. And then, Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart, may they be acceptable in thy sight, my Lord, my strength, and my Redeemer. Let everyone who loves the Lord say uh, amen. amen. We know that this is a wonderful message, a psalm that was written uh, by King David, the author of this psalm, and he writes the words, uh, in order to make known to all of the world the goodness of the Lord. Uh, he, he, he specifies that, that God has not only been good to Israel, uh, but he has been good to all of mankind. This psalmist speaks of those who have survived the horrors and the, of slavery and bondage in a foreign land. Uh, uh, these are the survivors that David speaks of. How prophetic of David to speak uh, hundreds of years before Israel went into slavery. But he says words that the survivors would then repeat and sing later as they walked out of bondage. Uh, he, says, uh, he says to us that these are the survivors of two generations, uh, two generations of Jewish exiles. Uh, uh, and they are now on their way back home to Jerusalem. Uh, the biblical record reports that while Israel was in captivity during the 70 year period of their bondage, they were under the rule of several nations. They were first ruled by the Babylonians and then the Assyrians and then the Persian empires. Uh, but what I need you to know is that not only were they under their rule, but they were scattered throughout foreign regions of Babylon and Persia. That's enough of the history so that I can set up this message. Well, yeah. The psalmist writes that they were gathered out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. So, right. so this is a song, these words, this psalm is a song of thanksgiving and celebration. And they fit 
perfectly in the atmosphere that has been created here in the New Calvary Baptist Church. These people knew who they were. They understood that they were the descendants of Abraham and Isaac and even Joseph. Uh, and Jacob, they, they were people to whom God made a promise to always be by their side. And these were the people who recognized that without God, they would either be dead or still in the hands of their enemy. So, so they had much to say when it came to the many acts of God on their behalf, especially in times of trouble and confusion. These were the people who could talk extensively about the goodness of the Lord. I wonder if you're one of those persons. I wonder if you're a, a person who can stand up and give a, a, a long dissertation about how God has been good in your life. In other words, these were people who could say so. Uh, when, when I think about the goodness of God in the lives of his people today, I wonder if we are as motivated and thankful to open our mouths in response to all of God's goodness. When it comes to God's redemptive work throughout our lives, I wonder if we really get it. I often question how God can be so good and so merciful to us and we can't seem to find the time or the energy to open our mouths and bless his holy name. I, I need to set this up with an illustration. You know, we, we, if, if they don't go to the circuses no more, I, I don't believe. But, but when we used to go to the circus, uh, uh, we would laugh at the clowns and we, we would enjoy the antics of the monkeys. Uh, uh, but when it came to the fierce lions, when they came out and began to run around the ring, uh, the people sat up and began uh -huh. to take notice. Y'all yes, with me today? Yes, uh, the people, are uh, they're okay with the lion tamer when he cracks his whip, yes. all right, uh, and getting the lions to stand up on two legs. Uh, uh, they're okay when he, he gets him to run around the ring and, and to help the lions jump from one stand to the other stand. Y'all remember that? Yes, sir. All of that was good and entertaining, but it is not until the lions are made to jump through the fiery hoop that we put down our popcorn, stood on our feet, and began to clap our hands with approval. Yes, Somebody knows where I'm going with this? I need you to know how many fiery hoops does God have to jump through before we will get on our feet and celebrate his goodness. How many enemies does God have to defeat on your behalf and lead you safe and sound and still in one piece before we learn how to stand up and sing praises unto his name? People who say so are those who are motivated to open their mouths and celebrate the goodness of God. So the question becomes, are we people who can say so? What is the makeup of people who know how to celebrate the fact that God has been great in their lives? What is the makeup of people who can really Say so. Yes. Yes. Well, these are my three points that I want to argue. I found out when you do more than three points, folk come to leave you alone and let you preach by yourself. <laughs> so I stay with three points. Uh, people who say so are people who have been redeemed. Yes. People who say so are people who have been recovered. Yes. And then people who say so are people that say it with their actions. Yes. Can I preach it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, well, first of all, people who say so have been redeemed. Uh -huh. The writer of our text, he quickly identifies uh, those who can sing this song of celebration. He says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Say so. This command is given to those who have full proof, who have evidence of what God has done in their lives. 
Uh, these are not people who heard the stories about God's strong hand of deliverance. No. Uh, these are eyewitnesses of God's power and work in their lives. These are the people who had messed up their lives. Messed up their lives with foolishness. But then here comes God to put back the broken pieces uh, all back together again. These are the people who who had who who he helped put down uh, uh, liquor bottles and and crack pipes and, and and begin to live for God one day at a time. The Bible calls us the redeemed. They, they, they were the ones Israel. They were the ones uh, that the Lord remembered, and He rescued them from the hands of their enemy. In this psalm, it comes to life for me every time I read it, even though I was never a prisoner in a strange and foreign land. It comes to life for me even though I don't know what it feels like to be led away from my home, my home in chains. I am nevertheless one of God's redeemed. Like the children of Israel, we too have an enemy. Our enemy is not a Persian or an Assyrian king, but our enemy is just as formidable. Our enemy is Satan, and he too wants to place you in chains, and he wants to take you from where God has already positioned you. And much like King Nebuchadnezzar or Prince Zerubbabel, they had plans for God's people. And our enemy, Satan, he also has plans. He wants to put you under his control. And he is not satisfied to control just you and your family. He wants power over this generation of your family and the next generation of your people. But the psalmist recognized that, that there was something that the enemy had overlooked. King Nebuchadnezzar and other kings, they had forgot that the people of God had, that they had placed in chains did not belong to them. Yeah. Made a mistake. They, they, they may have been in bondage and in a strange land, but, but they still belonged to God. Yes, yes, and child of God, I come this morning uh, to tell you, I don't know where you find yourself today. Whether you're down on your bed of sickness uh -huh. or struggling just to make it to the next paycheck. Uh, don't, don't you ever forget that you are still one of the redeemed of the Lord. As my little five, one tall mother used to say. She said, you may not have a pot to pee in. You know she didn't say pee, right? <laughs> or a window to throw it out. But you still belong to the most high God. No matter where you find yourself this morning, child of God, just remember that you still belong to the Lord. So let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Don't you, don't you ever forget that as one of the Lord's redeemed, we have a duty. It's, it's not just a suggestion to stand up and give God praise. We have a duty to let the world know who we are and what our God has done for us. Why? Because the people who say so have been redeemed. And then secondly, people who say so have been recovered. The writer then goes on and he says this about the people of God. He says, those whom... He has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. You can't help but recognize that the writer was speaking of a condition that no longer existed. Chains had been broken. Their freedom had been restored. And I need you to know this. The enemy used to have us all bound up in all kinds of things and in all kinds of, of wrong places. Places we had no business being. The enemy once had control over who you were and where you went and what you did. But the Bible says you have been recovered. 
That's because someone stronger than the enemy. Someone greater than the enemy crossed. He crossed over into enemy lines and set us free from the hands of our captors. And to be redeemed means to have been recovered. One who has been recovered has been placed in a better situation. We're healthier. We're stronger. We're improved. We're better off than we used to be. Every now and then, God has to come along and, and, and remind us of where we used to be, what we used to do, and where we used to go. He'll drive me past my, my once favorite place of hangout to remind me I was living beneath my privileges. He has to remind us sometimes. It was the hand of God that reached down and pulled us up out of what the old folk called the muck and the mire. Uh -huh. Well, my muck and mire may not be like your muck and mire, uh -huh. but we all come from some okay. form yeah. Yeah. of muck and mire. Yeah. We all have muck and mire in our rear view mirrors. Uh -huh. But whatever it was, God had to reach down. Yes, sir. God had to bend down and, and pull us out of where we were. Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. you did not belong in your old hangout. Uh -huh. You had no business being with people who meant you no good. Uh -huh. You didn't belong with people who did not know the God that you knew. Yes. And it was not rehab that pulled you out. It was not therapy that got you through. Nor was it incarceration or, or legal consequences that got you back on track. No, it was none of these things. It was the hand of God that redeemed you from the hand of your enemy. I know I'm right about it. I know I'm right. Uh, not only have, be, have I been recovered, but I'm in recovery. Did y'all get that? I, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a nice person till you cross me. I got that one proverbial nerve. Don't, 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 don't hit it. Y'all gonna wonder who is this? <laughs> because we're all in recovery. Uh, one day at a time. Uh -huh. One worship service at a time. One prayer meeting at a time. I don't think y'all know what a prayer meeting is. If I'm not careful, if I'm not prayed up, uh -huh. I might slip and find myself out of the will of God. And the best medicine for those who have been recovered and those who are in recovery is to stand up, open your mouth, and say so. Uh -huh. People who say so have been recovered. Uh -huh. Now that you're sober, you ought to say so. Yeah. Now that you've been healed, yeah. you ought to say so. Uh, what that means is that, that, that now that you are no longer a cancer patient, you can ring the bell. You know what that bell means. That bell means that, that cancer has been defeated. That bell means that you've gotten, uh, they, that bell may have gotten some of the cancer in your family. Some of your friends may have succumbed to cancer. Some of your family members. But the bell says that cancer did not get you. Cancer says you don't have me any longer. Somebody needs to stand up and ring the bell this morning. I'm not speaking of a cancer bell, but somebody needs to ring that bell. You're down, but you're not out. Uh -huh. You've been so far off, but you've now been recovered. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You were about to lose your cotton-picking mind, but God rescued you on, and recovered you. So ring the bell. Yeah. Say so. Yeah. People who say so have been recovered. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, I, so, so people who say so, they, they have... They are redeemed and, and they have been recovered. And then finally, people who say so, 
They say it with their actions. Yes. Yes, Nothing insults the goodness of God more than a silent church. A, a quiet congregation. Silent churches have forgotten where they come from. They become too cute to get loud and crazy for God. A silent churches are not moved when they see the same pain in people, the same pain that they came out of. It should break your heart to see someone going through the same hell that you just come out of. And, and, and when you are no longer moved by the pain of God's people, it's time to stop pretending to be the church of Jesus Christ. Jesus' most prolific lessons were not what he taught, but what he did. The master taught magnificent parables. But it wasn't until he turned water into wine. It wasn't until he opened blinded eyes and healed leprosy-filled bodies and raised Lazarus from the dead that people began to believe on his name. And one of the best ways for us to be a, a people who say so is to say what God has done. Say what he can do and say what he is about to do. We've got to come out of our pews and go outside of these four walls and begin to do for others what God has done for us. People who say so, they say it with their actions. They say it by loving the unlovable. They say it by feeding the hungry. They say it by clothing the naked. And if you won't say so, if you won't say so in here, there's a good chance that you won't say it out there. If you don't say it, if, if you say so in here, but you never say it out there, then what are you really saying? That's called fake praise. See, and fake praise will never honor God. If you don't love your brothers in here, how can you love those out there? What you shout about in here becomes your testimony out there. I love to hear how God healed your body, how he delivered you, and how he made ways for you. But the ones who really need to hear your testimony are somewhere out there. So we've got to take our testimonies to the street corners and talk about the goodness of the Lord. Sick folk need to hear that he's still a healer. A uh, uh, broke folk need to know that he will still open doors. Yes, and people who are at their end of the rope uh -huh. and about to give up, uh -huh. they need to know that he promised never to leave you. Yes. Never to leave you alone. That's right. So yes. let the redeemed yes, of the Lord say so. Yes, right. And by now, if you're still asking the question, Say what? Then you missed the message. Say what? He's a rock in a weary land. Say what? He's a shelter in a time of storm. Say what? He's a way maker. Say what? He's a friend to the lonely. Say what? He's hope to the hopeless. And all you got to do, all you got to do is open your mouth and say so. Hey! talk and witness to the lost because you have a story that no one can tell as good as you can you were there when he picked you up you were there when he healed your broken heart you were there when he made ways out of no way you may not know this Bible from Genesis to Revelation, but you know what God has done. 
for you, for your children, for your marriage. And all you got to do <laughs> is stand up and say something. Come on, let's give God some praise here. Today. As we rest upon our feet all over this place, those who can, I pray that you will become emboldened to be a praiser. I become that you will be released of the prison of inhibitions. People want to praise God, but they're afraid what it might look like to somebody else. What they might say about it. And, and, and how you might uh, feel about it once you're done. But I pray that you will be reminded that it is our duty. It's not up to the preacher or the praise and worship team to, to stir up your praise and get you on your feet. It's, it's because of what you've been through. Like me and most of you, we have scars that serve as testimonies of the blunders that we've made in our lives. Let those scars be a testimony of God's delivering power, his redeeming power. I once met a man right in the back of this church, and I, I asked him, I said, Brother, your, your wife comes here faithfully, but you never come to church. What, what, what's up? What do I have to do? To you? He said, as, as no good as I have been all my life, God will never save me. And I said, brother, if we had the time, I'd sit down and we could match all of the no good that both of us have done in our lives. And I think I'd be right there with you. He never came to church. Don't let that be your testimony. That you underestimate the power of God's goodness. God is able to take you from where you are to where you need to be. This is the message for those who are not yet saved. If you're living out of the ark of salvation, the safety of, of being one of child, one of the children of God then all you have to do is invite him into your life. Ask him to forgive you of your sins. To heal you of your brokenness. And then trust him with your life. If you're here, step out from where you're standing and walk down one of these aisles. Give your life to the Lord. Stop worrying about where you shall spend eternity and know for certain that every born again believer is on their way to heaven. This is for those who are watching on Facebook. Trust him today. Give him your worries and your cares. Perhaps you're already saved and you're out of fellowship. Get back in church. Stop blaming it on the pandemic. Stop living beneath your privileges by worshiping online. That should be something you could you do when you have no other alternatives. Get in church. Get busy for the Lord. Are you here? thinking about giving me a call just because of this appeal. I'll, I'll be glad to talk to you. 
302-218-0351. Call me. One of my members said to me, I bet, I bet T.D. Jakes won't do that. <laughs> Those desire your prayer, I want to pray for you this morning. Come on up. Bring your trouble. Bring your doubts. Bring your brokenness. I can't fix it, but God can. Sister Betty Hawkins is about to go into surgery later on this week, and we anoint her with the oil that uh, it, it represents the presence of the Holy Spirit. Our Deacon Brown is scheduling surgery in the near future. Just anoint everybody down there. Just use up the oil. Use it up. That's what it's for. We all have something in our future that brings us doubt and fears and concerns. We have a dear mother who is uh, standing strong in her latter years. We pray her strength. Father, in your powerful name, we come this morning trusting and believing that you are a healer you are a deliverer you are the one who sustains us when we're weak when we feel like giving up you're the one that gives us strength to press our way when we think we've done all we know to do you're the one that gives us another way another means of accomplishing those things that we dream about you put the dream in our hearts now Lord we ask that you would please give us what we need in order to fulfill that dream bring it to a reality that who we are and what we represent would be a reflection of your son the Lord Jesus Christ so we pray today Lord for those who stand before me I pray for healing for those who are sick and in need of healing. I pray for deliverance for those who find themselves in some form of bondage, some form of a habit or a lifestyle or, or a situation or a mindset that keeps them living beneath where you would have them to be. I pray for those, Lord, who feel lost and abandoned, those who experience loneliness in the midnight hours, I pray for one, someone who is still looking for that someone to complete their lives. Lord, today I bless marriages and relationships that you would prosper them to be what you've called them to be. I pray now, Lord, for mothers who are raising children without their fathers. Then, Father, I pray for people whose ministries are about to be birthed, but they're, they're worried, they're, they're concerned, they're afraid to take the next step. Give them boldness. Give them certainty that this is your will for their lives. I pray today, Lord, for clarity when it comes to those who want to seek the Lord's will. I pray today, Lord, that somebody will hear your voice crystal clear and have the instructions to do what you've called them to do and that they would get in a hurry to do what you want them to do to be about their father's will 
We've been broken down by sickness and, yes. and, and longevity. Yes. But somehow, Lord, give us strength. Somehow, Lord, make ways for us. Yes. And Lord, this prayer is not just for those assembled before me, but there are those who are listening who have been struggling, wondering, why me, Lord? Why now and why so long have I been going through? Lord, see about your people. Bless them as only you can, Lord. Clear their minds. Heal their bodies. Restore their memory. Give them what they need. Aching joints. Heal them. Diabetes. Heal them. Blood pressure. Heal in the name of Jesus, Lord, we, come, we are covered in your blood. Not only just for this moment, but into eternity. Why? Because your blood was shed once for all mankind. And Lord, we come to you believing you to be the sacrifice in our place. Bless us. Keep us. Watch over us. This, Lord, is our prayer. In Jesus' name. In the name that makes a difference. In the name that causes demons to tremble. In Jesus' name. In the name that breaks shackles. In the name that casts out demons. In Jesus' name. In the name that keeps us strong. In the name that protects our bodies in Jesus name amen amen and thank God shout 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 may be seated if, if if you can sit down we have one more one more order of business and then we'll we'll leave here rejoicing in the Lord I ask if sister Petrina Brewington if you would please come forward stand in front of the church and ask mother Carter if you would come and stand with her and uh, mother Wilson would you come please and stand. I am. I am at this moment uh, led to recommend uh, Sister Brewington, our faithful member, to join the ranks of one of the honored mothers of the church. Y'all stand around so they can see y'all. I, I know y'all look good. They need to. See. again the devil the devil tried to take our mothers but he didn't know we had mothers in the in the wings waiting waiting to be to fulfill their assignment 
We thank God. I recommend that uh, Petrina Brewington, based on her faithful membership here at New Calvary and her, her outstanding role as the mother of her family, the matriarch of her family, if we would uh, receive her as one of the mothers of the church. I, may I have such a motion? Properly moved and second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Are there any opposed? I put the mothers on you. <laughs> it is so ordered. Amen. Come on, let's give God some praise. Thank you for taking the assignment. We talk. congregation uh, with love in your hearts, with smiles on your faces, and goodwill toward one another. Amen. Let's draw nearer as a congregation in this new year. Amen. See about one another. Be concerned about their, their problems and issues. Don't tell everybody. Just do something about what you can. Amen. Am I right? Father, we thank you for this time of fellowship. We felt you. We heard you. Now, Lord, we shall walk with you as we go out of this place to say the goodness of the Lord. Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with these thy people henceforth, now, and forevermore. Let us all say amen, 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 amen. and amen. Shake somebody's hand. Praise God.